Okay, I'm at home for the holidays, hence the different setup. Actually, let's pause here quickly. Look at my view. This is the snow, this is the level of snow. I'm in Saskatchewan, by the way, and it gets really cold really quickly here in winter. Anyways, that's not the point. The point of this video is I was thinking over the holidays of about deals. There's always a lot of deals going on or uh, new products coming up, and it takes a long time to monitor these deals. Sometimes they go up, sometimes they go down, I think. How did I miss that? This technology, this product was on sale for so much cheaper. I wish there was a way that I would get notified when a product drops below a certain price. And naturally, of course, as the programmers, technologists we are, I decided to write a Python script to do this for me. Well, let's back up a sec here. Before I wrote the Python script, the most important part of this was actually to scrape data. And I needed to think of a way to build a web scraper. And there's really two ways that I could have done this or that I thought of doing this. The first is the manual way, meaning literally building a web scraper to scrape data and in this case from Amazon. Now there are some downfalls to this way though. The first is you have to maintain the code. The second is, well, what if the HTML element tree actually changes? So if you are scraping data based on the structure of the HTML, it's very common that it can change and in turn break your application. Now if this is an application for you or I just building for fun, that's one thing. But when you start thinking of large companies that you work for oftentimes, if they're building a web scraper, how this could be detrimental. Then I thought, well, what is the alternative? What is a better solution? And for this, I found Bright Data. This is a tool that I was blown away by. I've been using it, tinkering around with it for quite some time. And I'm gonna take you along today in how I was able to, in minutes, scrape Amazon daily, daily, for whatever product I'm looking for. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's just get right into it. So to sum it up, two parts to this project. First is actually getting the data through a web scraper. And in my case, I want to get daily data. So I want this to be data that is scraped daily. The second part is actually building the script for this to notify me a desktop notification when the price drops to a certain point. Actually, speaking of that, when I was playing around with this, I ran into an error and I thought, you know what would be fun? Let's try using chat GPT for it. And that's what I did. So I'll share that with you in the video as well. All right, got my computer here. Okay, I'm gonna put up on screen here Bright Data. This is a tool that I mentioned we are going to be using. Bright Data essentially is a comprehensive platform that allows businesses to easily manage, integrate, and analyze their data from multiple sources. So this could include structured data from databases or unstructured data from sources like social media, emails, and documents. One of the key benefits that I noted right away when using Bright Data is its ability to quickly and easy integrate data from different sources. This can save yourself, the businesses you work for, resources and time by eliminating the need for manual data entry and reconciliation. All right, let's dive into it. Okay, so as you can see on screen here, I am logged into my Bright Data account and you can focus on proxy infrastructure, web data platform. In this case, I'm already going to go into the data collection platform and go into collectors. Now in here, you can see I have some data sets. I've been playing around, as I mentioned, with Bright Data already, so that's why there's some existing ones. For this though, I'm going to go through developing a new self-managed collector. And kind of going back to the beginning of this video, we are going to be creating a Amazon product search that searches for iPhones. So for this, they already have some templates that you can build upon. So go develop a self-managed collector. And then from here, you can see there are a ton of different templates. Now you can start from scratch. You don't have to use one of these templates. This, using one of these templates, I found really helps save time and you can modify them to your specific needs, which is a benefit as well. So for this, let's go Amazon product search, use template. Okay, so as you can see here, it already has some code for you. It's already doing the pagination for you too, which is huge. And let's go into scroll down. You can type in a keyword. What is the latest iPhone? iPhone 13? Let's do iPhone 11. Let's keep it this way because what I think this will do is the whole purpose of this project is to search for products that might be on sale. And I feel like iPhone 11 is in that sweet spot that might be on sale now. And actually, totally off topic, but this is something I really need because one of my friends is looking for a used iPhone, so this might be the way to go. All right, from here, let's simply click on preview. And we can see it running here, the run log, which is great. And we can see the preview here. So right now it returned us the preview in HTML. And if we scroll down, we can see it all. 
All right, and as you can see, you can modify this code if you would like. I really like as well how they leave comments for what each part of the code is doing, so you can get very specific. But in this case, let's finish editing. Okay, and then you can see we have a save template here and the output configuration, there is a ton of different options that it gives you from search, title, URL. I mean, you're not just getting one thing. We wanna focus more so on the price, but as you can see, you can really build upon with many different outputs. So once again, you saw how many different templates there are. It's really cool. Okay, let's start getting this, integrating this into our code. Okay, so next up, we can go to the three dots here and let's initiate this by API. And there are some commands that we need to run. One thing I wanna note though, as you can see here, you need to get your API token. And for this, all you need to do is go into settings, account settings. So first what I wanna do is actually go into API tokens, add token, user permissions, expiration date. Yes, this all looks good, save. Okay, enter in my two-step verification code, save, and it will generate a unique token. Copy my token. And I'm actually gonna be able to show you this token, so I'm going to delete it afterwards. Dismiss. Now, if I go back into my collectors and then go into initiate by API, where we were initially, let's copy this curl here. And let's go, I just wanna show you how simple it is. I just pasted it in a bit better. Oh, not there, okay. Let's try this again. Now we have my API token in there, enter. All right, and this now makes available the ability to receive the result of the data collection. So let's go ahead and do that. Copy. Once again, I'm just gonna update it with my token first. Data set is not ready yet. Okay, I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. Let's try again in a few seconds. In the meantime, let's go take a coffee break. Okay, we can go back to it now. Okay, now we're back. Let's try this again. Amazing, look how cool that is. So quickly you have received all of the data. It's amazing and there's so much you can do with this now. All right, speaking of all we can do with this, let's get into building a Python project to utilize this data now to turn a notification, a desktop notification, every time the price is under 300. Okay, you can see here, I just created a new empty project uh, called Python Desktop Notification. Next, I'm going to open a new terminal here and I'm using Python 3, so we need to initiate the virtual environment. And to do so, I just copy and paste it in this command here. Click enter. All right. All right, and you can see now we have this file that contains other folders for the virtual environment. I always forget the scripts. You think after using Python for many years, you remember it. Okay, so it actually was in the wrong documentation, but I'll link this down below because it was really helpful for me when I was starting out in Python. And as you can see, I still use it if I forget commands. It's essentially Visual Studio Code documentation on how to get Python up and running. It's so helpful, uh, regardless if you've been using Python for a long time or not, if you forget anything. So we did the virtual environment creation. We just forgot to go inside of it. So let's do that now and now you can see we are inside the virtual environment so next up we need to install some packages let's create a new file called main.py to start with and now let's start by importing requests import requests let's go pip install requests all right it is installed come on go away we installed you there we go and we also need to install plier from notification. And this is for, uh, to use a package to implement actually notifying us or showing the notifications on our desktop. Pip install plier, here we go. All right, perfect. So now just as we did, we created that command in the terminal using curl. We're going to do the same thing, but in our project here. So first we need to define our headers. So this would include the content type and also to the token that we created in Bright Data. Okay, one 
one sec here. All right, so I jumped ahead a bit and just copied this code that I created. I already did this project and I'm redoing it, of course, to share with you. Um, okay, so as you can see, authorization, bearer, and then your token here, content type, this is a JSON. Then let's use this requests. So let's go response equals requests get, and then we are going to use the URL that was in here. Oops, let's go back to bright data actually, and copy this URL here. Okay, we're recording screen. As you can see on my screen here, I am now getting the response, printing out the data, as you can see. So I thought we'd do something really fun here. Uh, let's, let's utilize, let's harness ChatGPT. We always talk about it and is it going to take over programmers jobs and all that? Why not test it out? So what I'm going to do actually is copy this code here and go into ChatGPT. You can see I've been playing around with it already for this and I'm gonna paste it in. And I'm going to say, what should we tell it to do? Let's say, use this code to write more code in Python to get the prices for prices for each object uh, and notify the user when it is under 300. Let's go 300. This might not be worded in the best way, but this is really fun just to see what it does. Okay, we're going. All right, it's, it's doing pretty good. Prices for item and data, da da da, append item. This looks really good, like scarily good. Are we out of a job? No, I think, you know, even to go through this part and get this code back, which I just did, you need to understand exactly as to what you are typing in, how to utilize it, what does this code do? And it does tell you that, but there definitely is need for the human touch still. So let's give this a try just for fun here. Copy code. So it's looping over each item in data and then appending the item to price. All right, this is good. And then let's go over here for price and prices. If price is under 300, let's use the notification implier. All right, I think this is good. I don't know. Okay, let's open up our terminal a bit. And let's see what happens when we run this. Oh, you know what? I was getting this error before. So type error, list must be integers or slices, not strings. So right now we're getting a string back. Okay, so I'm not going to show you in this video, but I was getting this error before and I literally, that's how I started playing around with ChatGPT. I was sharing with ChatGPT this error and finding other ways to resolve this. So I'm going to actually update this code to the way that I resolved it. So you know why it was causing that error is because I wasn't using data. So as you can see here, I'm actually not using data at all, so I can get rid of this. And now we can see we are going through, looping over the response in JSON format, which then now should work. So as you can see here, using notification in the from plier, uh, you can add in title, message, app icon, and for this case, it's not under 200, it's under 300. Now let's run this and it should work. No usable, what the heck? No module, oh yes, we need to install this. I got this as well, no module. So let's go pip install. So this is another module within plier. Now let's try again. We're gonna get this one time. Hi friends, okay, I'm back in a different location. This is Tiffany coming from the future. And the reason being is when I was going through this video and uh, working on it, I thought, you know what? This is something that I really wanna use on an ongoing basis, on a daily basis. I wanna get these notifications every day. So I decided to use AP Scheduler and we'll go through the code here. Essentially, it is a Python module that will allow you, or a Python library, that will allow you to schedule when the code executes. So this could be on a daily basis, this could be on a monthly, whatever the case may be. Now, you have to keep your application running for this to uh, execute, of course, but it's still, but it's super interesting and it's very simple. I've never uh, scheduled a job to run on an ongoing basis before for one of these projects, so I was really excited to play around with it. So let's dive into it to make us get this notification 
if there is an iPhone that is under a certain price every single day. And you can see how handy this is for various projects. Actually, I used this library on New Year's when it was uh, 12 a.m. I scheduled because I knew I'd be sleeping. I was a very, I had a very quiet New Year's and I knew I'd be sleeping, so I scheduled that at midnight for text messages to go out. I used Twilio and this uh, library here uh, for text messages to go out saying Happy New Year. So there's so many different things you can use with this library that let's dive into it for this project and it's just a great tool to use for various projects though. Okay, enough of me talking, let's get back into it. Okay, so as you can see here, I added in AP Scheduler. Now let's go and install that. So pip install AP Scheduler. There we go. Oh, come on. All right, perfect. Okay, I also imported uh, pits, pites, pits, I'm not 100% sure, but essentially what this is, is it will be a Python library that we can use to define date and time. So with Blocking Scheduler, it automatically is set to UTC time. I'm in Eastern time, so I wanna set it to my time zone is why I imported it. Now, if we scroll down, let's initiate this function here. So let's call, or say scheduler equals blocking scheduler. Then what we will do is on top of our for loop here, let's create a function called, let's call it send notification. I can't spell today, what is new? That's the story of my life. All right, and then here, um, let's also choose, we're going to use uh, pits. So let's go time zone equals pits and then get the time zone. And we are setting it to, for me anyways, I am setting it to US Eastern. You can read the documentation if you're setting it to something else. All right, there we go, it is mad about us. Don't be mad. There we go. We're not mad anymore. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a JavaScript script girl. I feel like Python with its indentations is not my friend. All right, so now let's actually uh, schedule the function to run daily. So scheduler.add job. You can see we have some different options here. We are going to do send notification, which we created up here. And for this, it's going to be a cron job. Why are we mad? I'm telling you, if you could count how many times I mess up my spelling, if I give you a dollar for each one, we'd be, you'd be rich. All right, day of the week. We're gonna set the day of the week. Let's, should we set the day of the week or do we want every day? Mm, we want every day. Let's just do every day. But if you want, you could do day of the week like I just did uh, to get specific days. All right. Now let's do hour, we want it to be 10. I'm gonna do minute too, because I set it for 10, but now it's 10.04, so let's do 10.06. 10, I think, like that. I gotta double check, I think it's like that. Then time zone will be TZ that we just set. All right, minute, let me double check that this is how to do minute. Give me a sec here. Okay, so yes, this is how you do minute. Let's quickly change it to eight, save, and I already started running this. And as I mentioned, you have to keep this running. So let's see, well, you can't see the time, but it's 10.07 right now. So let's give this a minute and let's see if the notification pops up. I know it did because it already did for 10.07. For some reason, the notifications are giving me grief when I'm using QuickTime. So I'll be curious to see if it actually shows up because last time I had to insert a screenshot of it. I don't know why it's, uh, kicking the notifications away with QuickTime, because that's what I'm using to record my screen. But, okay, it's 10.08. Come on, notification, are you gonna appear? I don't know why it doesn't appear with QuickTime. Anyways, I'll insert a screenshot here because it will work on your computer. It does work on mine. Uh, it's just for some reason with QuickTime, it won't appear. Anyways, ta-da! Okay, we were able to make that within a few minutes. So imagine using Bright Data in a larger application or at work. Uh, hint, if you wanna stand out to your bosses, I would definitely suggest you share with them about Bright Data. But I also wanna share with you other things it has to offer. So right now, as you can see, I'm in Proxy Manager, and this is a great way, an advanced open source tool, to really help speed up development time and manage any proxy operations. So there's a few features that I wanna highlight here from live preview of the whole traffic, logs and statistics, IP rotation, session management. It's just incredible, and it's all in one platform. So also too, they have a Chrome extension, uh, different API and integrations. And then of course, where I was in the data collection platform. So Bright Data has a range of options that you can utilize all within your company or if you are building your own product. 
Okay, I don't know about you, but that was really fun to do and it's literally something I'm going to be using on a regular basis now to notify me for product updates, especially for the iPhone. But as I mentioned, this can be used for any product and there are so many different templates to choose from. If you're wondering why I'm sitting on the floor, it's because the camera keeps on dying and we're just keeping it real and organic over here. I linked Bright Data down below, so make sure to go sign up, give them a check out. It's I, I have so much fun playing around with them and uh, just seeing all the possibilities. Also too, I will link this code down below so you can add on to this project, build it as well. And if you haven't, hit that subscribe button for more coding, tech, and career related videos. And it's Boxing Day here, so I feel like I need to go eat some more treats. Bye everyone.